Hey, I'm Lawson. I'm the Chief Engineer at Ampere EV and today we're here at Southfield Classics and we're going to do a first start on this red Chevrolet 3100 truck. So we're going to take a look over the installation and make sure everything is connected up properly and then we're going to go through our first start process on the vehicle which involves checking sensors, checking the high voltage system, and then finally turning on the car and spinning the wheels. Now these guys have built a couple vehicles before so they are familiar with the system but we still go back and we check and we make sure that all of the junction boxes are plugged in that the onboard charger is plugged in appropriately, that their fuse boxes are wired and that the fuses are all in the right positions. An important thing is to make sure that the 12 volt system is actually ready to be hooked up so that they've got their 12 volt battery cables come into their fuse boxes and that their main ignition relay is connected and ready to go. So you can see our whole 12 volt system, they've put in a nice convenient spot here on the vehicle. We look over and we check that our main ECU is connected and ready, which it is. Uh, the motor is connected and the both 12 volt and high voltage connectors are ready to go. And then on the dashboard, they've got our GUI, which is that's gonna help us during the first start, see if there's any warning lights or indicators uh, that might signify that maybe we missed something. We're gonna go up to the front and look at the battery modules. So the battery modules have both high voltage cables and low voltage plugs. Uh, so we're gonna check those and make sure that everything is connected, which it looks like it is. Uh, they would have already done the uh, high voltage cable check and we do that on our pre-terminated cables as well which is to make sure that all of the cables are built properly and that the shielding and the conductor itself are terminated. Uh, the other thing we check is make sure that the coolant systems are filled. So we have two primary coolant loops on the vehicle. One is for the battery and one is for the motor, which are easy to access here at the front of the car. So we're gonna check those and make sure that both of them have coolant in them uh, and are full, which they are. And that's to make sure that when we power up the high voltage components, they get the proper amount of cooling. Now we're gonna go over and we're gonna use our service tool to connect to the vehicle. We're gonna do a series of sensor checks. After that's all complete, we're gonna start up the high voltage on the vehicle. So the first thing we're gonna do is disable the vehicle's high voltage. And we're gonna do that by unplugging the HVIL connector for our junction box. So just by unplugging this one connector, we're gonna make it so that the high voltage of the vehicle does not start. And then we're gonna take our diagnostic cable and we're going to plug it into the diagnostic connector of our harness. So we have that available on every vehicle and we're gonna take that and use it to connect our service tool and that's gonna let us get kind of some inside data from the ECU and verify that all of our sensors are working. We'll plug that up here. We're gonna key on the vehicle. This one's a bit unique with its aftermarket key fob system, but in some cars you might just be turning an ignition switch. And that's gonna let us connect up with the laptop and start going through our sensor check. So you'll see that our GUI turns on, a lot of the shifter lights and stuff will become active, but the car is not going to have high voltage active yet at this point. So we have our cable connected. We're gonna open a display file and then we're gonna select the display file for our software version that's on the car. So now it's found our ECU, we're gonna to connect to it. So here we have our display file. We have several tabs that let you see faults, inputs into the ECU, outputs that the ECU is providing, as well as some specific data pertaining to certain components. We're gonna go through here first, so we're gonna look at our inputs. And this is listed in our first start guide and that's so we can check our inputs such as the brake switch, the throttle pedal, our cooling fans, and make sure that everything is reading properly before we give the vehicle the ability to spin its wheels or power up any systems. We have some very specific indicated data from our sensors. For our software logic, we call the throttle, the uh, accelerator pedal position, which is APP. And so right now uh, you can see that it's reading zero. And what we're gonna check is that when we press the pedal that it increases normally. So Martine, if you wanna go over and press the pedal down to the floor at 100%, and we're gonna make sure that it's reading properly. So now both of our pedal sensors, and there are two for the vehicle, and we compare them to make sure they match. So if there was a wiring issue, you might see that one or both of the sensors would not read 100% now. So now Martine, you can back off the pedal and let's make sure that it reads not 100. Yep, okay. So on this one, the throttle pedal looks good. 
Uh, and that's really important before you spin the wheels because you can wire them in such a way that the throttle might read 100% all the time. And you don't want that when you're powering up the vehicle. So next thing we're gonna check is our brake switch. That's an important safety feature. So right now the brake switch is reading as off. And you press the brake, Martine. All right, and now it's on, which means that our sensor is reading properly and then let off and it goes back to off. So that sensor is working well. Uh, we also have sensors for ambient air temperature. This is in degrees C. Uh, so it's reading about 21 C, which is room temperature, which is good. It's about 75, maybe low 70s in here. We also have brake vacuum pressure, which our vacuum pump is not running right now, but this is reading about what atmospheric pressure is. So that also looks good. And then we'll check that our 12 volt voltage is good, which it is at 12.85 volts. And then if you happen to have manual park brake signal equipped, you can check that signal here. This truck has the automatic Willwood parking brake. That feature is all controlled by the ECU. There's not a manual parking brake feedback equipped. So now that that's all good, we're gonna move on to looking at our uh, CAN bus devices. So a lot of our vehicle devices communicate via CAN bus and we wanna make sure that some of the important ones are working um, before we power up high voltage. Otherwise, we're gonna run into some roadblocks uh, when we go to start up. So one of the most important is of course our battery pack. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna turn on the battery pack and we'll see that it's CAN messages are coming in as expected and updating, so that's good. Uh, and now we'll go over to the BMS tab and we're gonna look at the data that the battery is transmitting and make sure that we get all of our battery data and we can see that our cell voltage looks good. So we're at 3.88 volts um, and everything is nice and close together. So that is all good. Our pack voltage is at 372 volts. And then we're gonna go and check that our cell temperatures and coolant temp are reading good for each of our modules, which it is. So our cell temp is reading about the same as our ambient air temp sensor at 21 C and our coolant temp also all reads 21 degrees C. So that is good. Now we're gonna move on to our motor. We do need a lot of information from the motor in order to spin the wheels. And so we're gonna turn this output on and we can see that it's CAN bus data is coming in as well. So that means both of them are communicating like they should be. So that's good. Uh, and now we're gonna move on to checking that the fans and cooling pumps are working properly. So on the outputs tab, uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna manually turn on the fan one, which is our battery fan. So turn on the battery fan, we can hear it come on. And then I visually checked earlier that fan one is the battery. It's important that the correct fan turns on, not just that a fan turns on. So uh, we can turn on our battery and our motor fan independently of each other. Uh, so next we're gonna check the motor fan. I'm gonna turn that output on and I can hear that one come on. And that one's also connected to the motor loop. So that is good. And then if the vehicle's equipped with an AC fan, uh, you do the same check. This truck does not have its AC fan installed yet. So we're not gonna do that step right now. They'll go do that once they have it installed. Uh, finally, we're gonna check that the pumps are working properly. So we're gonna go and turn on our battery pump. So we're gonna turn it on. And we're gonna set it to a normal speed, let's say 50%. Just make sure that it comes on and it's running fluid through the reservoir. So I hear it coming on. Uh, we can go and check. So we'll go to the reservoir here and make sure that there is coolant flowing, which there is. So once coolant's flowing, we call that one good. We'll make sure that the motor pump also turns on so we can turn our battery pump back off, bring in our motor pump. We will also do a 50% just for a normal override. And I hear it coming on. So that one, you can see it's flowing. The motor pump's a little bit stronger than the battery pump is at 50%. So usually it'll be flowing a little bit more intensely. All right, so now we've checked our cooling system. So the cooling system works great. The fans work great. We know that if we turn on, everything's gonna get proper cooling. We've checked that the communications are working and that the battery system is working. Our important outputs and switches are working as well. So we have brake switch, we have throttle, uh, we have motor information, we have battery information. We're gonna go turn on the vehicle ignition. This time we have connected our junction box. So our high voltage system will be enabled. We're gonna hear a few clicks from our contactors during startup as the high voltage system turns on. Our pumps, like our water pumps and our vacuum pumps turn on. Here we are, we're ready. We're gonna go and turn on this ignition system. We'll hear a few clicks. So our vacuum pump. So now the high voltage system is powered on and we're gonna go check that everything is working properly. Still, after it's turned on, we're gonna look for fault codes. 
And then after that, if it all looks good, we're gonna spin the wheels. So we're back at our service display file. We're gonna go on here, we're gonna clear the fault codes. We're gonna see what faults are current on the vehicle and not caused by us having it unplugged earlier. So we go here, we're gonna clear our fault codes. And it looks like we just have one currently pending fault, uh, which is that our AC pressure is low. So that's okay, the vehicle hasn't had its AC system completed. That's not gonna stop us from spinning the wheels today. So press the brake. We're gonna turn the rotary into neutral and then into drive. And you can hear on this one, the Willwood parking brake disengages. So that's an important feature. So we made sure that that will release so that we can spin the wheels. And then now when I let off the brake, the wheels should slowly spin forwards, which you can see they are. So we're just free spinning. So we're not gonna spin them up super fast right now, but we just wanna make sure that they are spinning in the correct direction. On some vehicles, it might have a little bit of drag and you have to give it a very small throttle input in order to get it to spin. But right now everything looks good and we're gonna check the reverse direction. We're gonna stop the wheels. We're gonna put the shifter into reverse and that looks correct as well. So everything is spinning in the backwards direction. So that's good. And then finally, we're gonna check park, make sure that it goes back into park and that the parking brake engages, which it did. And we can hear our vacuum pump is operating. So it looks like the vehicle, once it's put back on the ground, is gonna be able to drive. So now that we've checked that the high voltage starts up and that the vehicle drives okay without any major faults, we're gonna test the charging system. On this truck, the charging port is hidden behind this fuel door. So that is a CCS and J1772 charge port. And we're gonna grab a level two charger that they have in the shop here. We're gonna plug the truck into the charger. The car is gonna start up and we're gonna see some information on the display that shows us that the car is charging and how long it's gonna take it to charge to full. We hear kind of the familiar clicks from the startup of an EV system. And then we're gonna look at our GUI for any information on if it is successfully charging and if it is charging, how fast it's charging. And we can see that the car did start charging. So it's currently at 66% charged. So we're gonna let it charge for a few minutes here and make sure that our state of charge increases to maybe 70%. So that concludes our first start on this brandy wine truck. So now once they get the rest of it buttoned up, they get the wheels on the ground, they're ready to take it for its first test drive. Thank you for watching. And we've got lots more videos on the Atom Drive System and the components that make our Atom Drive System EV conversion kit. Uh, please like and subscribe and you can catch us on our social channels at Ampere EV Conversions.